go. All right, hello everybody. It is August 14th at 5.38 p.m. This is the final personnel committee meeting. And if we can just go around the table and st uh, starting with Dane. Dane O'Connell. Jim Harris. Connor Kurtz. Rob Early. The other day, Dane Miller. We have a lot of Danes in attendance tonight, but we don't have any carols and we don't have any riches. So um, it's just the two of us here and, and staff, and we're going to um, shut this committee down. And I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about using professional staff, namely teachers, to cover um, duties like lunch, uh, proctoring study halls, um, essentially non-professional duties. And if there's a way that we can um, uh, use perhaps other uh, resources to, to make sure that um, our staff are doing really what, what they want to do, and that's instructing if they're teachers, and um, that's just a thought. So I don't know if we if there are any ways to do this. I don't know. Um, this is something I want to talk about in curriculum instruction a little bit too. The reason I want to talk about this now, I had a conversation with uh, Mr. McKnight at the high school, and uh, we talked about this. And for me, it's always struck me as being a little bit odd that we have uh, that we have teachers and vice principals standing in the cafeteria, pretty much, making sure that the piece is kept, and that's important, but that's well below their pay grade. And I, if I were a teacher, I certainly wouldn't want to be doing that. I'd want to be either preparing for my next class or teaching a class um, or doing something a little bit more intellectual. Um, so uh, I, I was wondering if there was any uh, discussion on that. And Mrs. Bites had proposed in the CNI meeting that we talk about something called the SMILES program. Unfortunately, she's not here tonight and she can't go give us an overview or her overview. But I believe this is essentially, a, they bring in the school district, they extend an invitation to senior citizens living in the school district, and they give them a property tax rebate in exchange for doing volunteer work in the schools. So I had brought this up a few years ago and didn't really go anywhere. And I'm still not quite sure how I feel about the, uh, this idea itself. But if we... Uh, we have a lot of folks in the school district, I think, maybe looking for part-time work, maybe a stay-at-home uh, parent who has children at daycare, who wants to come in and maybe earn a little bit of extra money. Maybe we can offer something uh, like being a cafeteria proctor or being a uh, study hall proctor, and that way we wouldn't have to pay professional staff those professional salaries. Instead, if we're just looking for somebody to pretty much be a body in a room to make sure that, hey, we don't want anyone to get out of hand, and maybe this is something we can do while helping out folks locally, while also freeing up teachers to, to teach more, to plan more. Um, I, I just, again, a, an idea. I don't know if this is something we've investigated in the past, or I think paraprofessional might be the term, um, the term of art. The teachers that, are, that currently have duties like that, whether it be lunch or whatever the duties are, does it rotate or do? Yeah, we rotate. Okay, so it's not it's not like You're a particular in. teacher is stuck with lunch duty all year. You know, no, it depends. It depends on what level you're at. Right. Yeah. The high school it, it was pretty much their set duty. It is okay. And is that in lieu of doing something else that the teachers do? Like, how do the teachers who end up getting that duty? And I understand that like, we're talking about the high school, and neither of you. I mean, that you're not directly related to that, but I mean, right. I'm just trying to understand how the teachers who end up there, why it's them as opposed to someone else, you know what I mean? Like, How are they chosen for that duty? Yeah, right? they, it has to do with scheduling and where where we can schedule the kids. Um, they, at the secondary level, the middle and the high school, the scheduling is pretty complicated in terms of peer, teachers can be teaching different periods. Sure, so sure. It, it comes down to really when you we dump all the stuff, the student schedules in, okay, like for example, a um, Spanish one class, you know, the maybe there's not enough kids during fourth. We need four people at lunch duty, right. and Spanish one doesn't have enough kids for that particular right. period, or they have the least enrollment, it would be the least disruption, so they end up getting that okay. particular. So it's period. never a situation where somebody has volunteered. It's 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 more a function of no. logistically. That's when 
these teachers happen to be, these teachers happen to be available at times where there's a need. So yes. they get drafted, if you will. Yes. I'll give you a good example. Is uh, you know, Connor, you probably remember this. If you had science labs, there might be three out of six days there might be a physics lab. Right. Locked in in a certain. But then the other three days there is nothing. Right. So there's an example of you couldn't run another section. So those three teachers might be doing lunch duty, right? You know, during that time, right? Because it's not feasible for them to do anything yeah. else, right? Right. Except use the planning period or whatever. I mean, like, right? They can't be doing anything instructional because right. you can't schedule another instructional use for that time. Okay. Do we have any idea? Um, out of a nine period day, our periods are nine days, or school days are nine periods, right? At least, I think that's how it was when I was in school. It is it eight periods? Or? It's, it's different at your middle level than high okay, school. Okay, so high school's nine yeah. periods, yeah. middle school's eight periods. Okay, so, so the, basically what will, what will happen, Connor, generally speaking, a teacher will have, it's not a not in every subject, yeah. it doesn't work this way, but generally they're going to have a duty period and a prep period. Okay. And duties, I mean, and I'm shooting from the hip, okay, your guys, but. Like lunch duty is an example of something you need to have four to five people in your cafeteria right. to manage the 340 kids or whatever that are in yeah. the cafeteria at the same time. Um, you're going to need people in hallway duty. You're going to need someone for your in-school suspension would yeah. be an example of, of a, a duty that teachers would generally have. Um, at the high school level, you're going to have your study halls that are going to be, need to be covered. Yeah. Um, so that will be an example. Um, so the hall duty will be an example. Of the, of okay, so those are examples. So. And then we have the, the teacher's own lunch break. Yes, yeah, so they also have to get a contractual. Policy. So that would be three non-instructional periods, uh, two of which are contractually were bound between the planning period and the um, lunch period for the teacher. Then that third one. Um, the duty is not contractually bound in that um, the they they're not they're not it doesn't say they have to have a duty period yeah. in their contract. So instead, they could have another class have another class here if we could get that covered. Um, the, the and I, I don't the one that we'll have to look at. There's some legal things of displacement of work. And like if you right. start taking if you have an I in school a teacher covering in school suspension, for example, whether. The, there, there is some gray area that we'd have yeah. to consult with supers, you know, before right. we would do anything of that nature. But those, um, those potentially free periods where those teachers could, those could be remedial classes, those could be maybe more intense, like if we need students, yeah. if we need to cover reading. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, because I, I just look at it in terms of economics, that if we have a professional who's, let's say, making $90,000, and one eighth of their professional time is spent doing something like walking the hallways. If we can pay somebody a, a ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar part time job to, to walk the hallways and use that other that professional to do something more professional, then I think that's better for everybody. But there's there's a problem with that, and I could go on either side. Yeah. Okay. When you bring someone in part-time and pay them $12 an hour, you're getting $12 an hour worth of skill, okay? Mm -hmm. So how do I say this nicely? When you bring people in that the kids don't respect, and this is high school, let's talk high school now, you're going to have more discipline issues because those people don't know how to manage children sometimes, even if they're a parent. I'd say that's true of anyone. Okay. We already do a grandparent program here in this district. We work with the IU. No, I'm sorry, Alvernia. Alvernia? Yeah, Alvernia. And they place, and they had them at your building last year. We did it the year before at Monocacy. The grandparents come in, they read to the kids, mm -hmm, they help. Right. But they're not going to be able to manage a, a high school. Well, no, I mean, but the expectations, too, are, are different. This is a volunteer program. and. But the skills that we're looking for really isn't, there really aren't many skills right now. Is there a specific skill set needed to um, manage, manage the cafeteria? Yeah, there is. And we'll find that the kids, the students, listen to the teachers or the administrators more than will, they will a part-time aide. I'm trying to think, though, back to when I, and this is anecdotal, but when we were in the cafeteria, we didn't really interact with the, the teachers that much. They were there. We went and ate our lunch, and the only time we would be, we would interact as if we were had to be chastised for doing something. Um, 
I'm just thinking that, you know, if we have, we have a lot of retired folks in this district and maybe like they've had professional careers and they're not necessarily coming into work for, you know, the lowest buck. Um, they're just looking for something to do and paying them $10 an hour to sit and maybe do a crossword puzzle while the high school students sit and do their work in the study hall. Like, I don't think that, I think that could be a good, and looking at the other hand though, what the teachers could be doing. The teachers could be doing um, intensive study with, with students who need that help. Um, the reason I'm kind of harping on this is because if we don't want to move in this direction and investigate it at all, then let's not, let's not go down the rabbit hole. I mean, I'm not um, opposed to adding paraprofessionals to the high school yeah. at all to offset some of the work that's needed in, in the classroom instruction. Mm -hmm. See, right. we don't need them to be monitors in the, in the cafeteria or hallway duty. We need them to assist teachers you know, if they're in the, in the classroom. So there's a skill level for that also. So to bring in untrained, because we'll have to train these people to deal with incidents. I mean, I, I've been at the high school lunch and I've seen kids picking on other kids. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to identify that and intervene and to act accordingly. So I don't want someone in there in a study hall to do a crossword puzzle while the kids are texting on their phones. I want someone in there so that the kids can go up to and ask a question and to be able well, to manage the room. Yeah, but that's not happening now. At least I don't think so. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but when I was there, kids were texting on their phones with a teacher in mm -hmm. the room. So mm -hmm. if, if the status quo is the same and we can have somebody in there. If the, if the result is the same, then let's get the same result for a whole lot less and put that teacher, allow that teacher, unleash that teacher to go and, and teach. Um, but uh, Mr. McKnight, if, if I could give you a little overview here of what we've, we've been discussing, just um, uh, talking about duty periods. And I know that we had just chatted about this offline a little bit and it made me think about what perhaps we can do to, um, to help in terms of bringing in folks to supplement um, what our professional staff is doing in terms of duties. And if you had any ideas or thoughts or um, perhaps bringing in, setting up a new kind of maybe class of employee, maybe like a part-time hall monitor or a part-time lunch roommate, and opening that up to folks in the community and instead letting those teachers either plan more, uh, teach more, do remedial pull-out work with students. I think if I put the piece between you and Jim, I think it's somewhere in the middle. Okay. I, I don't know that we can have seniors, uh, you know, come in and kind of just be present. Um, right. It would be, there, there's going to be more engagement, support, and, and skill set than that. Um, you know, I've seen power professionals do study halls. I've seen them do do cafeteria work, but they're people who are you know, ha have some level of training. They're not folks off the street. No, yeah. Right. They're, they're not going to be people well, like you know, we talked about the other, the other idea, the other program, like. Uh, Two years ago, we had an idea, and then we lost uh, Lisa Hunsberger, who was going to help us launch this, this, this Silver Fox idea, mm -hmm. which we were going to have them greet people, you know, kind of at the, at the front of the building and escort people to wherever they had to go in the building. You know, I think there's a role for things like that, and then just their presence mm -hmm. helps, I think, the uh, environment mm -hmm. uh, in the school. And, and our, our environment is pretty good anyway. By and large, kids are, are well you know, respected and respectful. Um, so I think there's a role, to, you know, for, for all those pieces. We I, have, do, I do think that being able to turn teachers into more instruction than doing some of those duty things would be, would be a more valued use of their time. Sure. So what Rob brought up, my gosh, was it a year and a half ago we were at that um, job fair in Reading where they thought I was a custodian? Um, that we bring in brand new teachers as paraprofessionals or paraprofessionals and they can assist as our subs, in-house subs, and I did this years ago, and we, we pay them not as a full teacher, but as a future teacher, and then that would be who we, our hiring pool, who we would hire from. So, mm -hmm. say the high school gets five or six of these folks, we would pay them whatever, but when we need a sub, they're a licensed, qualified teacher to act as a yeah. sub, but they're always in the building. These people would do the duties, the hall work, the study halls, assist the teachers in the classroom. So they would be full time in the building, and when a teacher was out, they would be the, the go to sub. Mm. And they would do also assist with other duties, but they wouldn't be a full teacher, but they would be a licensed teacher who's you know, 22, 23 right. years old, first, first out of college. So does that mean, would that mean perhaps then in the hiring, 
we wouldn't really advertise for teachers as much. Instead, we'd advertise for this um, kind of entry level position, and then they'd, the expectation would that they'd become teachers. I this isn't just both. a holding group. No. The, model, the model I think with really both. that you refer to is an apprenticeship model. So uh, when you're bringing teachers in, in in social studies, let's say we hired one in each content area, um, and they became the full time subs, kind of acting as Jim just described. Then you're apprenticing them into your programs when the next opportunity comes up. Right. Uh, the, the interesting thing for us has been that given the job contraction, that for a word that we've had, um, people might not buy in thinking there may never be jobs. Yeah, here, or right. I don't know what our, Rob, you may know what our um, furlough uh, queue is, you know, for people and, and where those certifications will be down the road for people waiting to get in uh, for, to come back for jobs. Well, one of the problems we have, and what I was talking to Jim and what he was saying there was, I mean, when we hire aides, I mean, ideally, if we could hire aides who are also certified teachers, one of the things they may be able to do at times is when we have an emergency situation, depending on what their responsibilities are as an aide, we may be able to shift them into a classroom um, so wherever we can to try to hire, um, try to hire teachers for that. But the trick is when we don't right now we're we're downsizing and then we're not we're not yeah. increasing right. our staff. So it's not a real attractive thing right. for someone like whereas if you were pick the Shabby, which is growing, you know what I mean? They, if you were there, that may be an attractive option where they know they'll be hiring. Yeah. Good point. Like like the, the other issue with regard to the viability of a program like this, right, is the rel is the relative surplus or shortfall in teachers, right? Like the, if if they're not having if teachers in the area are not having a problem finding a job, you're gonna have a hard time finding people who are willing to come in at a salary that's less than a teacher and without benefits and whatever the case may be to fill those roles even if we actually offer them, right? I mean it depends on the market. Uh, of course. Right, exactly. And I'm I'm not saying that that there are enough job opportunities that people wouldn't take this. I'm just saying it, it's a potential issue if in fact Well it's also a potential issue if if the, if the best of the best are getting these offers elsewhere, and this is almost kind of a, a last resort, that we're going to become this apprentice in Daniel Boone and not get paid as much as we're really qualified to be paid based on our peers getting jobs as full-time teachers elsewhere, then we, our talent pool might actually not be that talented. But, but we just talked about having senior citizens sitting there doing crawls. Yeah, but we're not talking about making them teachers then. Right, but what we're looking at doing, we, we talked about, was having a pool of in-house subs who are licensed teachers. Now we all know, well heck, it's August, those people out there are still looking for jobs, chances are they're not the rock stars, okay? So they'd be happy to come in and take a job, work, because after August you're not going to really find a job as a teacher. You'll be a long-term sub. Now, if, if we do this group, they can't be union. They would have to get benefits, it would be full time, and we would have to assess them. Because we've had long term subs here who, when the opening did exist, everyone goes, Not that person. Because it's an on the job interview right. the whole time they're here. And we've, we've had that where the person who's in the job, long term sub, applies for the job, and it's like, Sorry. And they've been long term sub in different positions year after year after year. So we would have to get people who are interested, who are 22, 23, just out of college, need a job. The season has passed for them to be hired full-time someplace. They'll take the job. They can't be a union. We need the discretion to be able to evaluate them. And if they don't work out, yeah. show them the door. If, if, we, if they do work out, the principals can work with them, develop them, and nurture them until a position comes up available, and then fine. But sometimes they may, this may be the highest level that they get or go to a district that really needs I don't know, an English teacher or something that, that they major in. But we, we could do this. And the high school, I would say, what? We need one per area. Uh, the elementaries would probably need two, two, two or three at, 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 the, at the elementary level. Middle school, three or four. And that would be it. But that would be the pool. And we, it would cut, reduce our sub costs. So we would have a sub savings because yeah. that would be a fixed cost. But they could not be union. And these te these folks would also then be doing the lunch duties. Yes. They'd be, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. They well, they, well, they, the they, they hand, would though, be flexible. What, what what we lack now in our contract 
is flexibility. Right. So we had an employee here. Um, he, he's gone now, Ted. When he became available, everybody jumped on him because it was a flexibility, the nimbleness that Ted offered us as an assistant principal. You know, everybody wanted him because there's a need. Yeah. There's a, there's a huge need for that flexibility where the teachers are contracted, our other employees are contracted. We don't have that flexibility. So these people, paraprofessionals, licensed teachers, when it, when it, it would reduce the number of study halls due to absences, which we've already cut back, but it would reduce it more. It would give teachers added support in the classroom, and it would give flexibility that the staff, the administrative staff, needs for, for, for various duties. And we wouldn't have to, and we wouldn't need a sub for them if they weren't there. Well, I think this is something we need to, to think about more, and adding that flexibility and making it easier to schedule and to offer and pull out courses if we need to provide enrichment or further instruction. And for the longest time, it's bothered me that we have these professionals in these positions that are really kind of menial, standing in a cafeteria watching uh, 17 and 18 year olds eat. And I, again, I think that there, there was a better way out there and um, we have to find it. Um, but alas, our time is out, so. Well, and you know, just, if we're going to take this on, and, and this is a big you know, topic to discuss, the timeline for real implication for us, the high school, for to have impact and to get expert help, is kind of we need them to have it by January. So then, as you build up the schedule, you say, well, you're going to have this many teachers create more science sections or yeah. whatever the case would be. So this, you know, this next six months, and then make a decision, whichever way we can go. Well, if I could ask y'all to please maybe see if you can think of creative ideas or this is something that I'm interested in, in thinking about and perhaps if this is something that can help. Um, and of course, there's going to be money involved, but I don't know how the board's going to feel about all that. But I think that there, like I said, there's something, there's a better way to do it as far as I can see. I don't know what that way is yet, but if we can be creative and think about it. Um, Seeing as I'd like to wrap up this committee, it is an ad hoc committee. Any other topics that we uh, that we haven't discussed in the last few months? Because um, I'm eager to, to close this. Going back to the job descriptions, after the you told me not to say an audit. After the the review of the secretarial group, it seems that the job descriptions are a bit outdated. Uh -huh. So we're going to be going back through those and updating those. I know we talked about job descriptions a few months ago. Right. We're going to go back through and update those job descriptions to make them more relevant to what Good. work is being done today. So that goes well. Come to think of it, though, did we? I don't think we ever formally abolished some of the positions that are on the books but have been unfilled for a long time. We talked about it, but I don't think we ever had a motion. Okay. So maybe this won't be the last meeting, as much as I want this thing to end. Um, We'll just put this on ice for now until your review is done, and um, then we'll come back. Unless, unless we can just do it at the board level without having a separate committee, because I don't want to just have meetings for the sake of discussing things that don't necessarily yeah, need to be discussed. The board just the job and you could always bring it up as a motion yeah. at the cal, because we you know when we do our. Uh, Thursday phone calls. Mm -hmm. Email Kathy on the job, the listing. Okay. We go through it. We stick it on the cow, and then it just goes through like anything else. So we can just do so. I mean, we've discussed a lot in this committee, and maybe there'll be some more wrap-up stuff we can do. But that can be done through the committee of the holes, and not necessarily, or yeah. the committees of the whole. Excuse me, and not per se this committee. Um, okay. Very good. Then uh, there's no public, so no public comment. We'll close the personnel committee meeting and the personnel committee at 6.03 p.m.